decided to do the carriage crock clock reassembly as well um, after cleaning so I cleaned all these plates um, I did put this reassembly back on and that's just a cap for one of the for one of the uh, wheels here and I was putting this back together again um, I pinned I just slipped the pins in here so so that's done already uh, let me just get a little closer here maybe uh, I slipped the pins in so that's done already I forgot to, to record that but all I did was put the pins in on the face the face is gorgeous by the way um, it's porcelain but it's it's this big chunk of friggin steel in here so I'm trying not to leave any fingerprints at all on this and I've got a glove on one hand but I'm just gonna try to clean this up probably should have a glove on both hands but but for now it's uh, one hand gloved Maybe I should put a glove on the other hand just so I don't screw things up. So I put a little oil on the inside of this wheel here. And this is um, this is for the, I think it's the minute wheel. But I want the wheel to turn freely. And I also put oil on the inside of this wheel here, which is the hour wheel, I believe. So I just have to screw this down and make sure it's tight enough to hold and I still have some movement here which is nice right so see this turns around a minute this thing turns around for an hour so so there we go that's that it sticks up just a little bit here so I'm just uh, not super concerned because this mat's really good so it's not a big concern I have to figure out which gears to put in where now so it's kind of reversing the process um, I'm leaving the hands off for now. The hands. I want to make sure this thing runs. Um, I took a bowl here. Took a big bowl and threw it all in and I used lighter fluid. Rosinol lighter fluid here to just get all the oil off and clean it all up. So I'm trying to oil it nicely as I put it back together. For oiling it, it's because it's like a pocket watch. I'm using Mobius... Mobius 9401, so, or sorry, 90104, 9104, Mobius 9104, um, and it seems to be good. There's an expiry date in this, but um, it's all synthetic, so I'm not sure whether these expiry dates actually matter or not. Someone can comment on that if and you want, um, but I really need to find the picture. So I got this picture of, of this so I could figure out how to put this together again. And then I have another picture of the whole movement, um, like this. So I had to make sure I put the right gears in at the right time. Uh, otherwise, none of it fits, and then, then none of it works. So as I can see right now, the lowest gear in the mix is, is the gear that's going to cause me. It's this transfer gear. So it's this one right here is the lowest gear in the mix. So I'm not, uh, not super sure whether I should be oiling the pivot first or, or what. So, but if I put a little oil on the end of that, like so, there we go. And then I put this in the hole. The question is, is that good? Now, I know for a fact that I need to get the escapement in there as well. And... I'm thinking that if I put, if I screw the escapement in the top here, then I can assemble the whole darn thing straight down. Um, if I don't put the escapement in uh, first, then I got this other issue of being able to get these teeth on the correct side of the escapement. So, so I think I may have to just put the escapement here, half of it in, um, screw half of it in maybe. I'm not sure. It's tricky. It's tricky stuff. So let me just see if I can if I should do that or not because um, I think without that I can't I got it I'd have to jog this forward somehow and it's not gonna work so it's it kind of screws up if you do it that way so but the escapement if I take the escapement that I have here and I screw it in nice and lightly right and then <clears throat> like just like this um, is this, I, I've got to get this thingamajabby doohickey in the bottom of the escapement on the inside of this. So it's, you typically just go like that and then screw it in, right? 
So, but I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it or not. Somebody that's an expert at this can tell me that I did it wrong. And each of these screws, uh, I tried to keep in the right order. So it's, so this one here needs to go right here, like that. I know this is going to drop. Yeah, I thought I thought so. So, man, this is not easy. So just like that, I'm trying to grab a screwdriver here without moving. And if I just screw this in nice and easy. least amount of pressure possible because I want to remove that and then make it all good in the future so just put that in like that and then screw that in so I'm being good by recording this because I wasn't actually going to record it I thought yeah you know what should be a good soldier here because people will say why didn't you record this and then I won't have a reason so there we go. I just want to make sure this goes in nicely and it's not too much pressure. This one seems to have a little bit of a pressure putting it in, so I'm not going to I'm not going to apply too much pressure on this particular screw cuz I think it's Yeah, I don't like the I don't like the amount of pressure that's being put on that screw. So, let me just remove the screw and see if another one would be less pressure not quite sure not quite sure just remove this here and then put this one in and see if this is making any difference here maybe it's the length of the screw for this particular application Or maybe it's not. No, it's still a bit tight. Alright, I'm leaving it like this because it seems to just want to sit down like this. There. All right, so that's that's in like that, which allows me to put this in like this, all right? Again, not absolutely sure that this is the right way of reassembling it, but I'm just going to give it a shot anyway and see what happens. All right, so the next wheel to go in um, in the right order is this this one right here, and it's sort of an intermediate wheel, I think. This one right here, I think, sort of a medium size wheel. And this goes in, if I orient my watch, orient my watch, this one goes in right beside this one, like that. So once again, I'm going to get a little bit of Mobius oil here. And I'm going to put a little bit on the pivot. Just a bit. I need to get my, ooh, there, clean that up a little. I think I touched the, uh, the watch there. So put that right in there. So that's that. And then the next one over is probably the mainspring barrel. Because I need the barrel to be in the hole right. So and I know it's barrel grease is probably what I should use, but I'm gonna use this again for oiling the edges of this. And just place that in here like this that look at that baby spin so put it in like that and so I've got that and now I'm looking at my assembly again to see what's next um, you see can I adjust this a little bit and yeah, what the hell all right so now I got the um, that in now the gear the next gear again and I'm oriented the thing so it's got to be it's got to be this one right here 
so again this is going beside the other gear I can see why all these dudes that I'm doing watch stuff with like doing clocks because you don't really have to have any sight at all to do this <laughs> you basically can be blind as a bat and still do this kind of work and then the last gear is this one here now the problem I have here is I think I'm pressing this too much so because this will go all the way through and this has to go all the way through the center like that so which means means I put a little bit of oil right at the base here because on the end that's where the hands are and I don't want to oil the hands so and the pinions are good the way they are they don't need to really have any oil on them but if I throw that right in there is that going to go down yep yeah. there we go so that's in there and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dabble do you right on each one of these and that way I've got these oiled as well and that'll transfer onto the that'll tran that oil will transfer through to the plates um, and then might be a little too much oil there but like that and I want to actually put I want to put a little oil on here too and this is to help this go on a little easier uh, I don't probably a probably a very good watchmaker would not oil these but I just wanted to put a little bit right there it's not going to corrode so I don't have to worry about that um, but it'll slide on a little bit easier if I put these on like that so so there we go so that's I believe all nicely oiled up and now I have to take this plate here and then slide it in right so this slides straight down I probably could have taken the screw out and not had to worry about that but I'll just it should be fine the way it is yeah it should be fine so I'm just gonna make sure all this kinda goes in and fits that's the right way to do it oh, ho, 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 ho. see if there's anything missing here I don't think so I think I got everything that's the top of the escapement there. So that is going in like this, and I got to make sure that all of these, all of these pivots go in properly. Now I know that it's got to go in a lot deeper than this, so it's I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on this here um, and push it down. But I don't want to push it down too hard, otherwise I could cause all kinds of other issues like this particular this escapement here is pressing down so I'm gonna have this loose like that <clears throat> now if I check the pivots here do I have a pivot issue okay that one there is not in the hole so now I'm gonna basically take my tool here this tool here and then tap the various gears and pivots as I push this down to, to get it in. It shouldn't be as bad as a pocket watch. Jeez. Some of the pocket watches are atrocious, terrible for doing this. Atrocious. So this one is way off. Got to get up a bit on this stuff here. There. Just a bit. and then you play with it you don't want to break the pivot though that's the tricky part here so I can some of these I can just push up and they're gonna they're gonna be stuck in the right place which is nice and some of them some of them are gonna be a pain in the butt like this one right here 
and where the heck is this one heading? Yeah, these two here are just not aligned up properly. Funny, I look down the center and I can see where the alignment problem is. But I know if I push too hard on this, I could break the pivot on the end, which causes it's going to cause me a whole other big problem here. So I just don't want to frig this up. All right, so that one's in there. And this one is it's in it's in the front one, but not the back one. Jeez, jeez, Louise. So that's in there, and now is it in the back one? Jeez. Farting with pivots. I think this is the hardest part of all of the whole reassembly of a watch. Oh, did it. They're all in. Now the question is, if I put a little pressure on here, is this thing going to move? Trying to see whether it's connecting there or not. Sort of not yet. All right, I know all the pivots are in though, so I want to secure this down and then I'll adjust the escapement after. So, so if I need to secure this, what do I need to do? So these pins here are for securing this in place. So I'm just going to push these in lightly right now. And then I'll give them more of a heave-ho after. That way I know it's it's in place, which is nice. I don't think I forgot anything. Hopefully I didn't. Yeah, see this is this is good there, but then this is out here. So Oh, there we go. Now it's in. Oh my god. Oh my god. And when I put these in, I'm putting them so that the thinner part of the, the pivot is on the is pushing inward. That's the plan, anyway. There's another one in there, and then I just check these. I'm eyeballing them to see what the thicker part is, and so because I've got such good eyes, I can tell right away. So that's that right there. And I'm just going to push these in a little with the back of my pliers, or my tweezers here, just to get them in a bit. And like that, and like that, and like that. So that's that. Good there. I have to fix this later. So I'm just going to make sure that this is going to work after. So what do I got next? Next is is this little jobby doohickey here. I, I use the term jobby doohickey so fondly, so, but it's this, just hang on. All right, so the next thing to go in would be this wheel, which is for the click spring. So if this click spring is down like this, like that, and it's clicking, it means it's clicking this way, I think, or the other way. Depends on which way you're winding the watch, I guess. It would slide this way, so it would go this way. It has to go that way. 
But before I put that in, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the edge here. Like that. And then I'm going to put this in place. Play by play here. Like that. Get this out of the way. There we go. And now I've got this thing here needs to go over the top. And this is going to prevent this wheel from just flying out. Right? Like that. And I screw this in. Like this. The big screwdriver here for this. And I just want to make sure that there's... Um, this is for just protecting the wheel, so... There we go. So that's in there. And now... And I know this this screw here holds this pivot for this wheel here, so... I just want to make sure it's all kosher, baby. It's all kosher. Every one of the pivots is attached to every one of the whatevers. So, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to loosen the top of this escapement here just a bit. I don't trust it. So now I have to adjust this escapement so it goes back just a bit. And when it goes back, it's going to make contact with the um, with the other side. <clears throat> it's going to make contact. The escapement's going to make contact with that wheel. That's what's going to happen. So I'm going to put the screw in the top here, nice and carefully, and hopefully this goes all the way down nice and easily. I think this screwdriver is magnetic. I got this sense that it's it looks like it's magnetic. That fit nicely. And I'll just I don't want to put additional pressure on any of this until I've got all the screws in place, right? So and then I can wind the uh, crank the the movement just a bit and see what happens, right? but I don't like the fact that this screwdriver feels like it's magnetic. There we go. Now, if I were to... well, if I wind this up a little bit, it's probably going to... Uh, probably gonna probably gonna start the movement but I don't want to do that with it, the hands being attached that's the challenge I currently have the dilemma also I want to make sure that this the screw is in place that um, This is like a cap screw for this particular for this wheel. And I'm not sure how much pressure to put on that cap screw. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of side pressure on that. It seems to work. Um, and then the hands um, to put the hands on uh, do I need this thing to be nicely boxed before I put the hands on? Because I don't want to lay it down this way and damage any of the underside here while I put the hands on. So I have to figure out how to how to rig this up so to put the hands on properly. Two posts, one this way and one the other way, would work nicely. Or if I just put the base back on um, and then use the distance from the base to the other ed edge to do that properly, right? Because I can put the hands on after I put most of this other stuff in play, right? But I, want, I do want to make sure that the uh, 
the watch is ticking first, right? So let me just put a little bit of a wind on this. All right, so I got myself some ticking going on, <clears throat> which is really good. Takes a ticking and keeps on licking, or something like that. So that's that. It's ticking nicely. Um, and I want to make sure that the escapement, I've got, I've got this little oil I use for my escapement usually. But I'm going to just put them on the top here. Like that. And then there's special oil for these feet. And this is the oil right here, Mobius 9415. Mobius 9415. I got too much light going on here. Let me turn the light down on this camera. There we go. Mobius 9415. 9415. There we go. And the way this works is that you... This is super easy on this. A little trickier on a pocket watch. But what I want to do is I want to put a little bit of this oil on the feet and it will transfer to there we go that will transfer to the um, the jewels it slows it down a bit at first but then once it gets going it gets going so that'll transfer to the jewels um, the pallet fork jewels and you'll see that the uh, the movement will work a lot better with that oil on it, right? So, which is a good thing. So now I've got to figure out how to put these hands on without ruining anything. Uh, the other thing I want to do is screw the rest of this escapement down so it's in place and I don't have any issues. So I'm just going to screw this down like that and then screw this side down like this. There we go. And I'm going to tighten this up. And tighten this one up. There we go. Now my escapement is good. Turn some light on here. There we go. So now this thing is ticking nicely. So when I put my hands on, there's no excuse. If the hands cause this to stop, then it wasn't my fault. Is that true? No. So it's oiled nicely. Um, I'm just wondering, like, how the heck do I do this? I, I want to put the hands on first. I'm talking a lot here. But I, but I don't want to have to lean this against anything. So what, I, what I'd like to do is have two bars, one here and one here, two pieces of wood or two bars, that I could lean this thing on to put the hands back. There's nothing in the books, which I don't have, that tell me how to do this. So I'm going to pause and figure out what to do. Alright, <clears throat> let me explain this, see if I can explain it. So this screw here pushes on the inside of this particular wheel and pushes it this way, right? This way? So this allows this wheel to make contact with the escapement on the top. And it, if you push it push the screw in too hard then there's too much friction with the escapement and if you don't push it enough then there's not enough friction with the escapement there's not enough movement so right now so as you can see the escapement the wheel can stop so it's fine-tuning this screw here seems to be a, a bit of an art so I'm not sure if I've got it set right or not but I know that I need to play with this a bit more to make sure it works perfectly so, if anybody's got any advice on how to do that, I'll take it. All advice will be taken. So, because other than that, the power is going to the to the unit. So I know I know that for a fact. So the only thing I don't know is how to put these stupid hands back on without. Maybe if I rest the uh, watch or the clock on my 
my hands or rested just rested on something right like the back of this particular is it gonna no that won't work I think I'm just gonna have to hold it up as I push the hands on seems to be the only way to do it if I do it any other way I'm compromising the thing so so it's see it stopped again and it stopped again because of this screw back here and if I just move that screw, let me see, is it tightened too much or too little? So, back it off just a bit. And then start it again. Yeah, interesting. I need some advice on how to adjust that. Because it doesn't seem to want to... Um, it's tricky. It's got personality. You know, these these hands are going to be very hard to push on because they don't have ginormous hand pushers for watches so I just have a normal hand pushers so I'm having I'm gonna have a hard time pushing these hands back on again so if I I'd like them to be perfectly lined up with uh, 12 o'clock I know that's not the right way to do it. So I'm going to need some advice on how to put the hands back on as well. Somebody, somebody out there must know. Somebody. Anybody. See, the, the thing stopped again. So and it has to do with that little pivot there. I need to know exactly how that works because it just seems to want to stop occasionally and I don't believe it's dirt in the escapement I can check that out after I guess but I don't think it is dirt in the escapement just move that just a bit and the way it goes again so Sue so, putting the hands back on the hands I do have hand putter honors but I don't think they're going to be the right ones. Where are my hand putter honors? I think I had them here, but they've taken a walk. Um, and I do have a series of hand setters for watches. I think I do anyway. I, I remember seeing a series of hand setters that I had for setting watches. Maybe they're for clocks. It's one of my million parts, so I don't know where those hand setters are. But I do know that this has to go on like this. And I do know that, that it would just slip on. It's pressed on. So, to check this out. Alright, I solved my problem. So all I did was I took the hand, the large hand, and I pushed it on. I used the edge of my um, tweezers to press it down until it was completely pushed on. And then I did the exact same thing with the uh, minute hand. And it seemed to go on without a problem. So this thing still seems to stop occasionally, like it's doing right now. And it's stopping because something is stuck in there or it just doesn't want to move anymore. So I'm going to have to have a very close look at how this thing is this screw here and how this whole thing works to see if I'm it's me or the if I, is, is too much too little friction on here or what's the story here so I'm not sure exactly how I should be working this thing and, and and when it stops is it stopping at exactly the same point is there a problem with the tooth because if there is then that's another thing right so and if I look at this and just move this a bit it'll start again And I can see if there's a tooth issue. Which I don't think there is. No. I don't think there's a tooth issue. Although next time it stops, I can actually mark it with a marker. If it stops, I can take a marker and just mark it. 
and then if it stops at exactly the same place the next time around then there could be an issue with the tooth and I can have a closer look at that tooth to see if I can deal with that because um, it's obviously not going through for some reason so and I don't think I want to put any oil in the gears or anything to allow it to slide through better well, that is a way of doing it so, so there you go so I'll just keep an eyeball on it I guess is the only thing I can do but let's see there it stopped again and now I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to mark that position ever so slightly with a little tiny marker and a little red marker and I hate to leave marks on this but I just want to know I need to know that that's the exact same time every time there so I put a little tiny red dot mark on this you can see that little red dot there and now I can just move this along past that point and it's that little red dot is going around in a circle now the question is is it going to stop in the exact same place every time for that red dot now if that does is it a tooth issue right and do I have to deal with the somehow the tooth maybe the pinion I don't think it's the pinion because the pinion is sliding around nicely and it's only when it hits that position and so it's 90 degrees to whatever that position would be if it stops again at exactly that place so let's have a look here in a second and see if it's going to stop hopefully I'm not boring the heck out of you but this is one way of diagnosing a watch problem so let's see if that dot comes around come on dot where are you I know you're coming in a second all right there's the dot I can see it right now and is it going to stop yep look at that it stops exactly where that dot is which means there is likely an issue at that exact position where that tooth is so I need to go 90 degrees from that dot and have a look at that tooth and see what that tooth is doing because it might just be a simple adjustment of that tooth um, hopefully I don't have to take the whole watch apart again but it is it is that wheel and it is that specific tooth that's causing the issue so, and it says uh, the <coughs> that tooth is exactly where the bridge is, where the bar is for that. So if I look down here, I can see the bar is on the top. So if I were to move that along and just stop it where that bar is, do I see a tooth issue? Right, that's the question. So I'll have a look at that and see if I can fix it. So I noticed when I looked at it that one of the teeth in the escapement is slightly narrower than the rest of the teeth. So that might be the issue. So I took, put a screwdriver in there and I just sort of twisted it a bit. And I'm not sure if that'll allow that tooth to go by. Yeah, it went by. So that went by this time. So I may have resolved the issue. So I'll let this run for a bit. But that's what it was. It was that one tooth. Um, that looked a bit smaller than the rest of them. So I'm going to let this go by again and we'll see the red dot go by again. And if it goes by that red dot, then we're good. If that red dot goes by, then our problem is pretty much resolved for now anyway. I'm going to let this, I'll show you this on camera as soon as that red dot comes into view and we'll watch this thing go by okay, there's the red dot there all right and let's see if it goes by or stops right by folks there goes the red dot so that worked so that's all that was it's a small tooth that caused the issue so i think that issue is resolved so now i can continue to reassemble this very beautiful uh, watch. So I'm just watching this red dot go by again to make sure I still don't have the problem. Nope, it went by. So the next thing I'm going to do here is just tighten these posts up just a bit. 
and I don't need much pressure to tighten these up. I just need to tighten them up a bit so there's so they're in there. And get that one there and then And I'm not sure how far these posts are allowed to stick out. Or I don't know how much how far they should stick out, I should say. This one's sticking out pretty far, but if it doesn't interfere with anything, it doesn't really matter, does it? So, oh, the escapement decided to stop again. I did loosen this up just a bit, which I probably shouldn't have. It likes to be just a little bit tight in order to get the the grip on the actual that gear is grip on the. Uh, on the escapement <coughs> again clearing my throat again I need some help here from uh, you experts out there that can tell me what I'm doing right or wrong right so so now I'm gonna put this back on and <coughs> I'm gonna assume a direction I think you see if I put it on like this then there's more on the face if I put it on like this, then there's more on the door. So which way does it go, folks? Which way does it go? This has got a lot of yucky stuff on this side, so it might be the door side. So it might go like, like this. Yeah, actually it does go like this. I can tell because it needs more real estate in the back for these parts of it. Right? So all I need to do then is is have some fun. No, that's what's your name, isn't it? So I gotta I gotta support this somehow while I'm putting these screws in. And I guess the only way to do this is upside down. So I'm not sure if the escapement's gonna stop or not, but upside down's like that. And then this goes like this. Like that. I think. And then these screws could go in. Like this. I'm going to just use the screwdriver for now. Although it's the wrong one. Let's see if I can just move my camera back a bit here. You can see my t shirt. And is that going to work? Yes, it is. Just want to make sure that's lined up properly. Remember, I'm a clock. I'm not a clock guy. I'm a pocket watch repair guy. So you're watching a pocket watch repair guy repairing a clock, which is crazy. There we go. That's tight enough for now. This thing is still ticking away, which is nice. And then uh, <clears throat> now I have to. I'm coughing a little bit because I did have COVID last week, believe it or not, and it was like a bad cold. And now I've got these here, and I just want to make sure that the glass on them is nice and clean before I reassemble it, just to make sure I got, you know the cleanest glass I can possibly have. Look at that, I just took the door off. So this door goes in like that. And then I just, I'm just going to clean this glass and I'll be right back. Alright, I've decided to clean the glass just to use a towel here and breathe on it. And clean it that way. Like that. And I know this will slide out. I just move this door out of the way here before I break something. I know this will slide out, but I don't necessarily want it to slide out. Or do I? Let's see. Take the glass off. Wipe it down. Same way you clean your windows. Nothing like a little CO2 to clean up some glass, eh?
All right, I think that's clean enough, folks. Right, I'm going to make the assumption that that's clean. This one here is nicely put in there. I know there's a piece of piece of uh, I think it's called what is it? It's a nice piece of cork that went along the edge so this stuff doesn't rattle. Doesn't shiver me timbers, right? But this has a piece of cork in it as well, I think. So I'm just going to work on this, clean this up nicely. I guess I can always unscrew it and clean it up later. But it's still ticking, by the way, which is nice. So it takes a lick and it keeps on ticking. So it's still ticking, which means I may have set it right. Who knows? Um, I'm going to turn this cloth around. I need, I need some more of this. I think this is a Pigini design cloth. But you want to make sure you get the glass clean. And then you want to blow it out just to make sure you get all the dust out of it so the dust doesn't settle into the gears. Because then you got a whole other problem. And I think that this thing here, I know that this had like this little piece of cork jammed in there so I'm just wondering whether I can jam this cork back in and then it will make a little less noise what do you think I'm gonna try doing that it looked like it was jammed in, in the side here not quite sure There we go. That little piece of cork is in there now, so I'm hoping that that keeps it in place a bit, right? And now I gotta put this down over the top very carefully, and I gotta make sure the door is also in there while I'm doing this. It's gonna be a really long video, I apologize. I think the YouTube people are gonna be pissed off at me for making such a long video, but. It's kind of a cool little clock, eh? I know you think it is too, out there in pocket watch land. Yeah, just clean this up a bit. This mapping and web has been around for a long time, folks. Maybe they were, maybe they helped Napoleon make these things. I think he, I think they did actually. I think Mappin and Webb were involved in the whole Napoleon thing. So I think I'm going to put this down first and then I'll lower the uh, <clears throat> lower the dome. Lower the globe. I'll just put this down first. Hopefully none of the pieces fall out as I'm doing that. Um, before I do this though, I'm going to squirt this out a little bit just to make sure I any dust is kind of gone. I also want to make sure that the top piece of glass is visible, nicely visible. I'll just clean that up just a bit here. I can get the other part of it later, but let me just lower this, lower the globe here. And I need to lower this down like that and then I need to screw those screws in which means I gotta turn stuff upside down again all right so I've got the top on now I gotta put these screws back which could be tricky here one two three four now the perfectionists and watchmaking I'm probably going to pick out all kinds of stuff I did wrong so please fill your boots I'm going to just turn this whole rigmarole upside down again and see if I can find the screws on the bottom the whole 
enchilada is upside down so but I'm gonna just put these in place here and I'm hoping they can find a home so that one found home and if I do the diagonal one it's possible this one should find home too I just have to twist it around until it's good to go, baby. Good to go. That worked really poorly. I think I'll do the back one first. That does look a line there. This screw this screwdriver is magnetic. That's two. So I get two and then you're good to go. Now I just need to put the other two in. And then put the back shell on. And we're good as gold, people. Good as gold. Okay, that ain't screwing in. That is so magnetic. <laughs> You see, is that magnetic? Oh yeah. Magnets and watches, not good. Not gonna, not gonna at this juncture. So now what I do is I just loosen all these up because one of them is causing a misalignment. So I just have to loosen them just a bit. And then that will allow me to align this, this one here, which is the oddball. Come on, get in there. Find home. Oh, there we go. It's found home. Now I can tighten that one. Tighten that one. Tighten that one. Tighten this one. Tighten that. Tighten that. And then the last thing to go on is this, which is the plate. And I think it goes on this way, which is kind of odd, but it kind of makes it look pretty fancy this way, though. It's got a screw on the top, and then when it smushes down, it uh, it aligns it up, which is nice. So let's do this one now. I don't think I have to tighten it that much. I think I'll just loosen that up a bit. It's supposed to be a roof. So I think it's something like that should do. Right. And it's still ticking, folks. Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. So there it is. Just open the door, make sure I get the hinges right. There's the hinges. And Closes. I'm not sure how that works because it looks like it's stuck when it closes because it does stick in there. And then the front of it's like this and it is running. And that is the Mappin and Webb Mappin and Webb carriage clock complete disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly. Again, I cleaned it using uh, Rosignol lighter fluid. And then I oiled all the pivots when I cleaned it. So, so it's uh, there. It is ready to rock and roll. Thanks for watching my video. And um, any comments I'll take. Uh, lots of fun doing this one, and especially adjusting that escapement. Thanks a lot, and I'll talk to you later.